I'll turn that on right there. Um, I did want to make an announcement also uh, about um, for a week ago. And he's playing bass tonight. Amen. So that was wonderful. Yeah. Just a little over a week ago, and he's here tonight playing bass. Thank you, Kevin, for being here tonight. Jody says, I call you Mike all the time, but I don't think I do. I know I call you Kevin. I might have done that one time in my life, but. Um, I want to invite you over on Sunday. Could I eat? <laughs> Our donuts didn't get here this morning, but in the near future, in the very near future, we're going to have a full breakfast again, so you might want to think about uh, them doing that for us and uh, taking care of, of all that and uh, uh, cooking for us and being part of the church here, and they do a good job on that, so they won't let me tell you, will you? They won't let me tell you when, because they haven't told me when yet, but they're going to do it. Hey, did you boys know that, that y'all going to do that? Okay. <laughs> I just, just wonder. Just, John didn't know? Okay. You're finding out tonight. All right. We told you you're going to do that. <laughs> you just, like me, I just tag along. Yeah. Yeah. But they're going to do that for us. So uh, I don't know when it'll be, but it'll be good, I guarantee you, when it's over there. Well, tonight, let's look back in uh, first story. Most of you know this story anyway, but it is a great story, a great part of the Word of God to show us how that God takes care of our distresses in our lives. And we've talked about many characters in this study over the past few weeks, Jonah and Elijah. And we've talked about these characters and how the, and David and how God... Brought. And I'm just going to read the three verses tonight. I want you to look at verse 10, first of all. Let's read it. Verse 10 says, And she was in bitterness of soul... And prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And then verse 11. And she vowed a vow, vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thy handmaid a man child. And then go on down to verse 19, and we'll look there. And they rose up early in the morning, this is Hannah and her husband, and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came and remembered her. I just remember her. And in verse 19, he does. And I just want you to know tonight, God knows where you're at. Away. But he's not. He's right there with you. Let's thank the Lord for the reading of his word. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word tonight. We lift you up and magnify you because you're worthy. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing for us, how good you've been to us. Thank you tonight for your word, and we just pray, God, as we take a little time just to study your word and to listen to your word, that you will rivet our heart with the truth. The thing that you have for us tonight, and it's different in all lives. You speak to us. God, I ask that you speak to us tonight. Help us to leave this place saying in our hearts, surely it's been good to be in the house of God. In your precious name we pray these things in the name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. Now, tell somebody you love them before you sit down there. You know, I said that. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, as I told you this morning, in this story of Hannah weeping, we looked, and I told you, of at least two things that she was weeping over. The first thing was that she was weeping because she was not able to bear a child. And the second thing was that she was being made fun of. She was being mocked because she was not able at the time to have children. 
And our message tonight is going to be threefold. I, I'm not going to go over what we went over this morning, but it's threefold. And I just want to tell you what some of the things we went over this morning. We, first of all, talked about Hannah's burden. How it was a burden to her that she was barren, that she could not have children because she really wanted a child. It was a burden to her because of Paniah that made fun. And then we talked about her uh, discouragement set in. And, and with you tonight, that may be what's happened to you. With the burden in your life, whatever that might have been, discouragement has now set into your life and you just don't know how to handle it. You don't know what to do about it. You don't know how to react to it. And then the third thing tonight will also... So, Hannah was burdened because she was barren. That's a difficult experience, as I said this morning, for any woman. And the reason it's difficult is it's a natural thing. God has put that within a woman to want children. Matter of fact, it's God's design for you to have children, to be a mom, to be a with a this, that children talked about is that this really working something out in her life. Speak to us in that situation. Show that so that he can show his his power in our life in that situation. And so that's exactly what God was doing here. And she had closed her spiritual eyes and, and was not aware of what God was doing. And sometimes we forget that with every problem that we have, every problem that we have as Christians, I want you to understand, God is really the only one that has the solution to it. We think we do, and we think that we can speak. You know, and, and we think we can do this, but God is really the only answer and solution to our problems. You remember I said this morning, He's behind the scenes of, He's always working behind the scene of every Christian, every person that loves the Lord. So when we feel discouraged, don't ever forget, don't ever forget that God is right there with you. The second thing we talked about, and just barely got into that this morning, was that we talked about what was the cause of Hannah's discouragement. One of the things that we looked at quickly this morning is that discouragement for Hannah was because of her husband's other wife, and we said this morning, uh, that's a problem within itself, and that's a whole other subject. Hananiah was... Her adversary, I'm talking about Hannah's adversary, Penaniah was. She'd done everything that she could possibly do to provoke her, everything she could do to keep poor Hannah uncomfortable and, and keep poor Hannah crying and upset all the time. Anybody, have you ever known anybody like that in your life? The Bible even says in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 6, and her adversary, that's a big word there, also provoked her, her sore. That Hebrew word there has the same meaning as would we would normally understand as adversary to mean. And it means this, it means trouble, it means uh, rival, it means affliction. And that's what an adversary does. They cause this in your life. This is the reason Hannah was weeping, because there was always some kind of trouble brought by her adversary, some kind of uh, rival always brought by the adversary, and affliction, and anguish, and distress, and tribulation. All this came with that relationship that she had with Penaniah. She was always there to dig in. And to never let her forget that she was barren. To never let her... seen this in the Bible before when we talked about the handmaiden and had the, the child. It caused problems all along. And that's what it did here. I want you to know tonight that the devil uses people. Some of us say, well, in, in these stressful situations, in these discouraging... I want you to know that the devil, the number one thing that he can use is other people against you. He uses people. He uses circumstances that he may put you in. 
He uses circumstances that he may put them in with you to cause trouble in your life. But never forget that God does not cause people to sin. The devil is the one that comes against us. The second thing tonight that we're going to look at is not only did Penaniah was her adversary, but Penaniah also was her antagonist. Some of you are saying right now, isn't that the same? Well, I'm going to show you the difference in just a moment. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 7. So she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. An antagonist and an adversary are very similar. There's actually a fine line between the two. I, I didn't know this until I started studying about it. One can be an adversary and an antagonist at the same time. The difference in the two is that the adversary is actually out to do harm, to get you. They're out there, they, they go against you. The antagonist keeps working on you behind the scenes until they can get the, do the job done on you. And some of you tonight are understanding what I'm saying because you've had both of these come against you. You've had that adversary that just out blatantly just calls you out, just out blatantly just, just tells you that you're no good and that you are never going to be any good and that you'll never amount to anything. Does anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? And then there are those that behind the scenes just dig at you. An antagonist. An antagonist may be somebody that lives beside of you. An antagonist may be, lives, uh, may be somebody that works with you. And they just keep on working and working on you behind the scene until they get the job done. An adversary can be your neighbor next door. I mean, the antagonist takes a proactive approach at you. That's what Penaniah was. She just created a bunch of heartache for Hananiah every day just digging in. I want to know something. What do you and I, that's the question that I ask myself, what do you and I do in a situation like that? Do you just haul off and slug them? I hope not. <laughs> Seriously, what do you do as Christians? <laughs> as Christians, what do we do? Well, we should turn it over to God. And tonight, if that's your situation that you're in, you don't know what to do, I'm going to give you the answer already to this message. Just come and turn it over to God. And you really need to do that because if you don't, that situation is absolutely going to drive you crazy. Some people hold grudges over these people that antagonize them. They hold grudges for years and years and years and years, and they never forget it, and their life is just miserable because of this antagonist that kept doing it in your life, and you just can't get over it. And tonight, I'm here to tell you that this depression and all of these things come from not getting rid of that. Get rid of it. You can't haul off and just slug them. you got to love them and help them through it. Can I say tonight something on your part that will help you? God always has a way to take care of these people. God always has a way to take care of these people. You don't have to do it. God does it, and God will do it in this story tonight. I want you to look at something and notice something. By the way, in, in verses 2 and 4, after verse 2 and 4, you never hear the name Penaniah again. It's never mentioned again in the Word of God. So what happened to her? I believe the Lord took care of it. However, Hananiah's story continues on throughout the first two chapters of 1 Samuel. Hananiah's story is one of blessing. It's one of love and mercy. We see her story, how God blessed her. 
But there's not one thing said about Peninnah again. But she was her adversary. She was an antagonist against her. We know that Hannah was a godly woman, don't we? Because the Bible tells us that. And I asked you tonight, does God know that you're a godly woman or a godly man? Because he sure does know those that do wickedness against his children. God knew Pen and I, he knew what she was. Another thing about her that I want to say is that, as you will note in verse 5, it says that uh, it says there that Elkanah uh, loved Hannah, but it never does say that he told Pen and I that he loved her. Ever. But he loved Hannah. Isn't that amazing? Now we do know from the story that, that he was able to give uh, Penaniah her, her due. He gave her her money and he gave her children their money and he took care of them. Uh, but the Bible says that he really loved Hannah and really took care of her. The point is, God puts it rather bluntly in Proverbs people and these people that have uh, uh, something against God's people and try to, uh, agonize, uh, uh, try to uh, be what they shouldn't be to them, antagonistic and, and, and uh, adversaries against them. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 10, 7. The memory of the just is, read that with me, what? Blessed, but the name of the wicked shall... Now, that's some tough words there. The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. That's what God says. Now, I'm not saying that Pen and I wasn't a child of God. We don't know. It doesn't say. However, I do know she was a wicked person. The third thing. How Hannah and I fixed her problem. How'd she do that? Here's how she fixed it. She did it on God's timing. Now I want you to know tonight, God may not answer your prayer tonight. He may not answer it next week. He may not answer it the next week or the next week or the next week. But I will tell you this, God will answer. He will. You want to know why? Because we have to understand tonight, it's God's timing, it's not your timing. A lot of people get discouraged in this life, and I'm sure that uh, Hannah was there also. A lot of people get discouraged in this life because they, they pray and they seek and they want so bad that if he doesn't give it to them right then when he's actually working things out in their life and doing stuff in their life, listen to me, that if he don't answer right then, they get mad. But you need to understand tonight, when you're discouraged and all of these things, you have to understand that it's God's timing, not yours. Now, that's a big deal. That's a big point right there. We just can't say that we understand that. We've got to understand that we need to understand that. Look at what it says about God's timing in 1 Samuel 1, 7. Year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, you see, she went to the house of the Lord. She never missed the house of the Lord. She went up there year by year. We know why she went. She was praying for this problem, for this discouragement in her life. Year by year by year. Boy, that, that, that's hard to take right there, isn't it? Year by year. Here's a mistake that Christians sometimes make when they're discouraged. The mistakes sometimes we Christians make when we feel persecuted. The mistake we make when we feel everything and everybody is against us. A lot of people will quit coming to the house of God. Now listen, look at me. A lot of people will quit coming to the house of God when they get discouraged. And that's a big, big mistake. Because here's the key tonight, as I just said. Us as Christians need to do what? Wait on God. Let's all say that together. Wait on God. 
Wait on Him. You say, preacher, I just can't hardly wait. Well, you're going to have to wait. The Bible tells us about this waiting deal in Psalms chapter 37, verse 7. When it talks to Christians tonight, it says this, rest in the Lord. That's really, a, that's really an answer to the question before you ask the question. Because what God is saying to you in our discouragement and stuff, we're impatient and he's saying, rest in me, wait on me. And so what he's really doing is saying to you, rest in the Lord. So tonight, the first thing you need to do in this discouragement that you're having, the first thing you need to do is put your faith and, and, and all that you have and rest in the Lord. Crawl up and let him hug you real tight. As a child of God, you have that right. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Listen now, fret not thyself because of him uh, who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. What God is saying there is what he's really telling Hannah. He's saying to her, I got this. I know where you're at. I've not left you. I'm with you right now. I've got your back. I, I'm here. You just need to rest in me. You say, that's easier said than done. How many would say amen right there? I mean, let's just be honest. Let's all just be honest tonight. It's hard to do, isn't it? I mean, when your child is getting ready to have surgery, it's hard to rest, isn't it? When your husband's sick, it's hard to rest, isn't it? When your wife's sick, it's hard to rest. When there's marital problems, it's hard to rest, isn't it? And let's just be honest with each other tonight. Sometimes we fail miserably at that. And I'm here to tell you tonight, listen to me, that's the reason that we don't have the joy that we should have. It's because we haven't learned how to rest. You know, all these little things over my life I have noticed, all these little things that happen in my life, all these little trials and tribulations, they're, 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 they may be small in nature sometimes, they may be big in nature sometimes, but they all have worked to, to, to the fabric of my life. Does that make sense? They all have worked to the fabric of my life to help me even today when, when things like that happen in my life, you know, like these, these little things that pop up, you know, that people's sick and this one's sick and somebody in your family's sick and, and, and somebody loses a loved one and all these little things, that all these things, these fabrics that God has, has done over a lifetime, that sometimes these discouragements that come in my life that has happened in a lifetime, in the end, to, when I go through them now, God reminds me of them. And lets me know, what did you do last time? You, you, you had rest in me. What did you do last time? You had trust in me. What did you do last time? I had to wait on you. And he shows me that and tells me that. You Christians understand that tonight, right? You know what I'm talking about. And can I say he's never failed in any of them? Never. You say, well, that prayer I prayed, you know, my husband is still sick. That prayer I prayed, my, uh, my wife died. My, uh, you know, this happened, this happened. He didn't answer that prayer. Well, are you so sure that he didn't answer that prayer? Because God can look down through life and he can see the future. And God knows the future for every one of us tonight. He knows the best for me and you tonight. I know, been there, I know, I understand. We've got to wait on God. And after the answer comes, we've got to rest in the Lord. Before the answer comes, we've got to rest in the Lord. We've got to be patient with Him. I mean, Hannah was broken hearted. She was a good woman. The Lord loved her with all of His heart. He loved her. 
He loves you. And if anybody should have had a prayer answered right then, it should have been her. But the Bible says that every day, every time she went, she went and prayed. She never ceased to go pray. And folks, that is a clue right there. Don't ever cease to pray. She prayed. She sought the Lord. And in this thing you're going through, and this discouragement you're going through, and this heartache you're going through, I'm telling you tonight, never cease to seek the Lord. Continue praying. 1 Samuel 1.10 says about her, she was in bitterness of soul. That means that she was almost just broken down. Her heart was, was, was melting within her. And she prayed unto the Lord and she wept sore. Now, I don't know, I can't even explain that word. It just means that she was in trouble. She was troubled. Some of us have been there. You're there maybe tonight, discouraged, troubled. Your heart's broken. You don't understand. Psalms 56, 8 says this, Thou tellest my wanderings, uh, put thou my tears into, the bo- into thy bottle, or are they not in thy book? God knows when you cry. It'll be remembered for eternity. But the most exciting words in this whole chapter, and I've got to hurry, is 1 Samuel 1.19. And the Bible says, as I said just a minute ago, and the Lord what? <laughs> Boy, isn't that a good verse. God remembered her. And look at me tonight. God is remembering you right now. He knows you're brokenhearted. He knows you're discouraged. He knows you're down there. He knows you don't understand why. He, he knows, but He loves you and He remembers you. In 1 Samuel 1.20 says, Wherefore it came to pass when the time, listen, there's going to come a time. The Bible says when the time was come, God's got a time. Praise His holy name. He's got a time. He's got a time already figured out, already ready. He's got a time. And He knows you. He remembers you. And that time is for you. It's set aside for you. He knows the time. Just like for Hannah, He he knew the time. She was crying and praying, and God already looked into the future and said, Honey, you're going to have a child. I'm going to give you one. I've got a time picked out. God's got a time picked out for you. That He's going to bless you and overwhelm you with His presence. God always has a time. And last but not least, God's way. Hannah wanted a baby. She was barren. It was put into her heart to be a mom. So if it wasn't bad enough, Pen and I mocked her because of her barrenness. She was discouraged. Verse 10 tells us she was bitter. It it tells us it was bitterness of soul. In other words, it was horrible. It was an aching in her soul. God heard her. But he also heard her vow. She made a vow to him. And in his time and his way, as you're going to come to church and you're going to shout, you hear what I'm saying? You're going to shout the church down because he has lifted your burden. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? When he lifts that burden? I know when I came here, and I tell this story all the time, but it's, it's significant in my life, and I want you to understand that. I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't significant in my life. I came here, and, and, and I was so, de- in my own spirit, I was, I was just so, uh, just, 
just pressed kindly in, in a way, and, and just to pre- I could not get out of it. I tried. I'll tell you what it was. I know what it was. The devil was trying to discourage me. The devil was trying to keep me from being at this church. The devil was trying to keep us from, and me from doing anything at this church. He, was, he had me down. I mean, I couldn't hardly get out of the bed in the morning. It was bad. I mean, I, I shed tears. I, I prayed. I, I came to the altar and, and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I walked around this church and prayed and, and I, I begged God, God, please take this away from me. You just don't know how hard that it was to get my mind right to study and to preach and, and, and to do the things, that, the, to smile and to keep my mind on the things. That, you just don't know. Maybe some of you do know. I mean, I was down and almost out. Honestly. In about a year... About a year after I came here, I was just so down one day. And I come in this church, and when the old altar was here, we had those steps here. And I prayed on this side, and I opened my book to Proverbs, my Bible. And I just started reading and reading and reading. And all of a sudden, within my spirit, I said, Lord, I love you so much, and I want to do Whatever you want me to do, I'm your servant. I remember the prayer. I'm your servant, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I adore you. God, just help me in it. And I got up from that altar, and it was gone. It was gone, folks. Gone. And now I know why I went through it. That's between me and God, but I know why I went through it. And it was for him to work the things out of me that needed to be done through me. And tonight I praise him for it. But during the time it was hard. Because in the midst of all the tears and the fears... And all the heartache and all the things that I went through, I learned the number one thing. You want to know what it was? Trust Him. You build nothing on yourself. You do nothing by yourself. You trust Him. Can everybody say amen tonight? Guess what? Guess what? Hannah got a baby. Matter of fact, I want to read that to you one more time. In verse 19. Look at the things they did. They've been doing this for years. She's been doing it for years. Remember, in verse 19 says, And they rose up, that's her husband and herself, rose up early in the morning, and worshiped even through a heartache one thing God taught me during that time worship me worship me no matter what you go through worship me no matter what's going on in your life praise me honor me and worship before the Lord and returned and came to their house at Ramah and Elkanah and Hannah his wife And listen to what it says. And the Lord remembered her, and the Bible says that she conceived a child. I'm here to tell you tonight, if you're discouraged and you're going through something, you don't bring it to me, you don't have to go talk to anybody else. Look at me. You need tonight just to bring it to God and leave it with Him and trust Him. Thank you, Father.
Thank you for this night. Thank you for your precious word. Thank you for the story of Hannah. Thank you, Father, for the way that you presented it to us in your word. And I pray that if there's anyone here tonight that needs you, that they'll just come and bow down before you and ask for you to help them. Because, Lord, sometimes life just overwhelms us. Not understanding, overwhelm us. God, we just need you to intervene. You're here tonight and God is speaking to you. I'm going to ask you to step out from where you are right now. And come and just speak to the Lord. You don't have to speak to me. You speak to Him. We're not going to linger, I promise you. We're going to sing one verse of the song. If you need to come, I'm going to ask you to step out from where you are tonight.